We conclude this evening with Anil Argawal, founding chairman of Vedanta Resources. He capitalized on India's economic liberalization when a giant aluminum company was privatized. He now has assets in gold, copper, zinc, and aluminum. He recently donated a billion dollars to establish a world-class university in India. We talked at the JW Marriott Hotel in Mumbai. You represent an interesting part of the India story. You have a government here that decides it wants to privatize some of the nationalization that had taken place. One area was minerals and aluminum. What did you do and where did you come from? I, I used to be in the eastern part of the India. And uh, when I was 20 years old, I came to Bombay to look at the opportunity. This is the first time I sat in the plane. I never spoken word of English. So I, you come to Bombay and you uh, start Uh, collecting scrap from the uh, cable uh, companies yeah. and you have when you see the cable company as an entrepreneur you want to own the cable company and finally in the uh, 86 you own a cable company and you run that company and um, when you see the cable company you find is a not a great business the ingredient of cable is a copper and aluminum so let's look at and look at the backward integration and you go backward you set up the plant, very difficult. Everything was 90% business is in the hand of government. And you, as entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurial spirit, you move forward, look at what opportunity is there, you set up the copper plant, you set up the copper smelter, then you look at the aluminum, you buy a small aluminum plant, which was available with the government privatization, then you expand it, then you look at the large privatization, then you acquire asset abroad, you acquire two uh, mines in Australia, then you go to Africa, you acquire mines there. It began, though, in a serious way with the opportunity to privatize the aluminum. Aluminum. That was the breakthrough. That's the breakthrough. The Another breakthrough was to acquire Hindustan Zinc, which is one of the largest, the only producer of zinc and the silver and the lead in the country. Do you believe this government wants to eliminate most vestiges of government ownership, nationalization, as well as protectionism? See, if you look at billion people, we have to build 90% new asset. The existing asset which government owns is only 10%. For billion people, 90% new development has to take place. If government open the door and start building up a new asset, this 10% which is existing, it will be most insignificant. There will be no hue and cry. It will go as a package. That's how I look at it. You are giving a billion dollars. I'm not sure how much of that your wealth that is, nor am I sure over how long a period it is or what conditions are attached to it. What are you doing and why? I have voluntarily pledged before the Prime Minister of India, then I'm going to give one billion dollar my personal money. And I looked looked at around where this money can go. And I could only identify if I can change people, if I can produce leader, which world is looking from India, and create a university for hundred thousand people. That university should have the one of the world best sports complex. I feel ashamed when I see in no role in Olympics from India. We have to have, we have that talent. We have to get the best coach from US, Russia, anywhere. They must teach our children. I'm looking for the world best library, auditorium. You know, I'm looking the research. India, whether you talk about agriculture, whether you talk about biotech, whether you talk about engineering, anything you talk about, this is the place. I'm, I'm looking people to hire. I'm, I'm getting a couple of corporations are coming to us that they would like to take uh, children of age of 15 and hire them now and fund their complete study till the time they get graduate and give them a five-year contract 
set up the set up the facilities here so they can do the research in FNG, in agriculture, in biotech. Phenomenal, I get fascinated. Where is the strength of India? I think the strength of India is in, in its two things. One is the spirituality and the spirituality and the uh, um, democracy. They are two strong pillars of this country. Democracy and spirituality. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and not one religion. But no, lots spirituality of has nothing to do with the religion. Spirituality is just connecting that body and soul are not together. It's too different. One is an engine, another is a body. And that's how in simple manner, and once you know that, you are free from all attack. You're beautiful, you're simple. That, that's, that's what it is. You think the government mindset is moving in step with where entrepreneurship is moving? Entrepreneurship is moving faster than the government. And that is by the nature of democracy or, some, or the inability of government to change long-established behavior. It's very interesting. I was talking to John Mann yesterday, and uh, he wanted to grow in India tremendous, tremendous. Uh, 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 John Mack being the CEO of Morgan Stanley and a, uh, a he, bank. He says, uh, when I see, and I told him, look, you have to understand India. India is not a country. It's a country where the adjustment are there. There is an arranged marriage here. There is an arranged marriage where 90% of the girls, people have just seen and get married and there is no divorce. Same way the business is going to develop, whereby the father, most of the father, want their son to come into their business. Even if he does not wish, they, they push him, they, they do the counseling with him, and finally he takes the position. That's what is happening. And it is the same way as a marriage take place, same thing, because there are not too many opportunities. I get very confused when I go to the US. Even if I buy to, if I have to buy the smallest thing, I have 20 varieties. You know, here is only one variety, there is one girl you have to marry. <laughs> so you want choice? You have, you have no choice. And for that, India is tremendously will grow as an entrepreneurship. As the individual business, family business will grow tremendous. What could derail it? What could impede India's reach for greatness? I don't think anybody, anything can stop India. Uh, it, it will not grow as China grow because uh, tremendous dictatorship what they can do, but India, until you have a consciousness, the people, the party, the politics, the ground level, everything. So it may go slower than China in terms of manufacturing, but ultimately I think we'll be the best because we are fully transparent. Why do you want to be on the New York Stock Exchange? You're on the London Exchange, you're on the Indian Exchange. That's ultimate. If, uh, if you talk to any Bollywood uh, people here, filmy people, their ultimate is Hollywood. And uh, New York Stock Exchange is the uh, exchange which believe that the, the American company, if it is listed, American people would like to invest in that company and that company will be governed very well and they, 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 they should be in position to invest in third world and give the, give the shareholders value. What's the responsibility of the state, India, the state, the government, to the poor? See, earlier it was basically food. But uh, food, clothing, housing, I think it has moved from there to road, electricity, and water. So the government ought to make sure they have to make sure... Why has it taken so long? I think the politician was not educated enough to understand. They have gone just to somehow just grab the power. But now they are understanding that the demand of people 
if they don't fulfill, these people are not going to lead them. So they are coming back to discipline and they have to deliver. It was the process. It was a process where people have to deliver these three things. As earlier, it was food, clothing, water. Today is very important to give them a water, uh, road, infrastructure, electricity. Now, if somebody would watch, some cynic would watch you say that and say, he's only talking about the things that he needs. In fact, you were one of the people who was called in, I think, to consider the electrical power grid problem. Yes? Yes. The government calls in and says, well, okay, you are smart entrepreneurs. What do we do about this? Ah. Oh. Absolutely. Because 40% of the electricity seeps away, I'm told, in all the transmission. So you lose power. How are you going to fix this essential element? Electricity. Power. When we had a meeting with the uh, finance minister and finally with the prime minister. Who once sat on your board. Yes. Did he not? Yes. He called the open meeting and I said, you trust us. You tell us what we need to do. We will do everything possible for our country. We will benchmark uh, with us with the world best best builder. We built thousands of megawatt power plant in two to three years' time. Just move forward, and that's what government is doing. You will see, in three years' time, four years' time, they will build at least 25, 30, 30,000 megawatt power. We will build it. Is there a limit to what India can do? I think this is the first stage, first stage, and the uh, the biggest thing is the relationship of U.S. A lot of depend on U.S. and India relationship, and which is where, very is, where is it today? Strong? Not so strong. It's, it's, it's strong, but uh, sometimes the political parties or the vested interests. I think uh, U.S. is genuine. They really believe in helping India for everything. But sometimes, because of the democracy, in Indian India people, Indian people think different. How do they think different? It's like anybody. They, they think that they are U.S. maybe taking advantage of uh, India, and which is not. It's fearing the big. Exactly. It's, it's not. They want us to be strong. They want us to be competitive. They 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 know that certain things. It's outdated for them. It's too expensive for them. They spent three hundred fifty billion dollar on health. They have to find a new solution. They have to do more research. They have to, and in, where else they can go in India? Most people think that China and India represent the Asian century. You seem to have this special affection for America more than most people I talk to. Where does that come from? It's fundamentally the U.S. Are very straight. They mean business. It does not matter from the caste and skin and the color and the suit and the tie and the shoes. They believe that somebody talk business, they will talk business. That fascinates me. I must tell you, Whenever I go in, um, in Europe, ask for the appointment, people will say after a month or 15 days, in U.S., invariably, I pick up the phone and they say, you want to come in in half an hour? That's amazes me. That's how I get fascinated with that country. You like the American attitude. Absolutely, for the business. You see 300 million people in marathon. Doesn't matter, they fail, the government help them again, they grow up again. If you could write your own epitaph, what would you say? What what do I say? To remain, you know, to give as I said, to give back to society, I have two things very important. What profession I have, I must do hundred percent. No matter what is the bottom line, but I'm going to give a best shot. And what comes out? Keep little for my family and give back where thousands other people come up. Thank you. Great to have you. Thank you. Pleasure. Pleasure.